Jesus leaves his believers with a commission to go and preach the gospel, to go and preach the truth of the kingdom. And what did Jesus begin to teach? He began to teach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So the good news is that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The good news is that Jesus Christ has died on the cross for sinners. And the fact is, my friends, that every one of us, myself included, I'm not standing here today in any kind of self-righteousness, for I am a sinner, a depraved sinner in my nature. And I admit that, but the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross and paid the price for my sin. I didn't pay for it myself. I have no ability to come back to God. There is no hope for me outside of Jesus Christ. But He has saved me by His blood that He shed on the cross. This is the good news. Now I want to ask a question. What do you think of the world in which you live? What do you think of this world? Every day we turn on the news and we see such devastating things. Look at the war between Russia and Ukraine. And we see wars, we've seen many wars, world wars, wars in countries by themselves. And we've got this current war going on. And why? Because of men, selfish, proud, arrogant men who want power, which causes war. This is, this is the issue. Men are proud and arrogant and haters of God. And because of that, war erupts because we want to rule the world. That's why we have the war in the Ukraine, because Putin wants to re-establish the USSR. But we turn on the news and we see murders. We turn on the news or the Sky app that we have on our phones in this generation. And we see rapes and murders and robbery and uh, school massacres. Is there any good news on the news these days? What do you think? What do you think? The world, it's bad, isn't it? Yeah. It's a horrible place, isn't it? We see news every single day that's bad. You must admit it. You must see the world in which we live. What do you think? What do you think of the world? What do you think of the world? What do you think? Do you think it's a nice place to live? Do you think it's full of wickedness and hate? Yeah? Yeah. It's so full of hate, isn't it? And that's why. Because of men. Men's choices. Men's sin. Men's sin. And hatred for each other. But only you know the depth of sin in your own heart. The Bible says that we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We don't, we don't reach His standard. We talk, about, uh, the, we talk about good. Many people I've spoken to and they said, well, I'm, I'm a good person. And maybe in some respects, humanly speaking, you, you may be. But by whose standard are you good? By whose standard might I say that I'm a good person? Let me ask you a question. Are you a good person? Are you a good person? Are you a good person? By what standard do we measure goodness? That's a question. Are you a good person? Are you a good person? No. no. You're not a good person. At least you admit it. The truth is none of us are good. Jesus Christ said when a man came to him and called him good, he says, why do you call me good? For only God is good. And the truth is that our standard of goodness has to be God. My standard of goodness cannot be me. My standard of goodness cannot be how much charity work that I do. My standard of goodness, if it's my own standard, falls short of the goodness of God. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so because we've sinned, my friends, because we have rejected God and Christ His Son, that is the ultimate sin. 
You know, we can talk about sin. There's sin, sins abroad today that are absolutely depraved. We live in a world which is a live and let live world. If you're happy, be happy. Whatever it is that makes you happy, do that. Do it. As long as you're happy, no problem. No problem. And so we have people who decide to take it upon themselves to change their sex. I used to be a man, now I want to be a woman. As long as you're happy, you go ahead and do it. Who am I to say that it's wrong? Well, Christ and the Bible and God who created you says it's wrong. The Bible tells us that God created men, male and female. And the fact is that if we say that we have been born in the wrong body, we're saying that God has made a mistake. Friends, this is sin. How is it? How is it? That we can say these things because we're saying them against God. It is God who we are sinning against when we say that he has made a mistake. God never makes mistakes. He created men and he created women and he created them to be together in one unit. Oh, my dear friends, there is sin all around us and God judges sin. He hates sin and we're all sinners and we've all fallen short and we all find ourselves in a place where we have no hope and our destination is in outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do you know that if you don't know Jesus Christ today, if you don't know the Saviour, if His blood has not cleansed you from sin, then you are already on your way, on your way to outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. The law tells us, the law tells us that we've disobeyed God. Oh, we've disobeyed God, friends. And we continue to live in our sin. And we reject Him. This is the greatest sin, is that we reject the Lord Jesus Christ as Saviour, as God, as Lord. That's who He is. And I'm telling you today because there is hope that even though you are in sin, and I was in sin, and you may be in sin if you're not a believer, that there is hope. There is hope for you. There is hope in Jesus Christ. That's, that's absolutely certain. I've just been speaking to a, a young man who has lived a life, maybe in some ways a terrible life, and he believes somehow that he can't be forgiven for his sin. And I believe, friends, that there are many people amongst us in this day that believe that they've sinned so badly that they can no longer be forgiven. But I want to tell you this morning, no matter how deep your sin is rooted, no matter how long you've rejected Christ, today you can be forgiven because the blood of Jesus Christ is sufficient. Oh, let me tell you this, friends, the blood of Jesus Christ is sufficient. He is able, God is able, He sent His beloved Son to pay the price of sin, to die on the behalf of sinners. His blood is able to cleanse you and your sin. He's able, He's able this morning to free you from sin. What do we need to do? Put our trust in Christ. Turn away from sin. There is a word called repent. In the early chapter of the book of the Acts of the Apostles, the Apostle Peter is preaching. And he is telling the people that they are responsible for the crucifixion and the rebellion and the rejection and the betrayal of Jesus Christ. They are responsible for his death. And the reality is that although that happened 2,000 years ago, you and I are also responsible for the death of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it was sin that put him on that cross. It was sin. Yours and mine and every person that has ever set foot or been born on this earth has sinned. And it's that sin that nailed him to a tree.